Not sure how to use layers in Luminar Neo? Confused by all the options like blend modes and masking? In this Luminar Neo layers tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started using layers. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I teach beginning and intermediate photographers how to improve their photography, right from capture in camera all the way through to the end of the editing process, including using Luminar Neo. So if you're ready to get layered up, let's get started. The first example I want to show you is how to add a texture overlay as a new layer. I've done some basic editing to this image just to adjust the color and the contrast. Here's the original out of camera and where I'm at now. My original idea with this image of the boat in the Hong Kong Harbor is to give it an old style feeling, almost like it's antique. So adding a texture overlay will work well. If you've used previous versions of Luminar, like Luminar 4 or Luminar AI, there was a texture tool. Now, if you're familiar with or starting to learn Luminar Neo, there isn't a texture tool. You need to add your textures as a layer. There are both pros and cons of this switch. And to be honest, they're both the same thing. There's more to it, meaning the cons are there's more to learn on how to apply it, but it also means that there's more to it and you have more flexibility of how you can apply the texture and even edit it. Let's take a look. The layer tool in Luminar Neo is over on the left hand side. I'm in the edit module. To add a layer, you simply click plus. There are a few things that come with Luminar Neo and you can see those down below. Stardust, Boca, sparklers, and so on. But you can also add your own layers, including textures. To add an image as a new layer, you just have to click load image, navigate to the image you want to add. I'm going to pick this one, for example. This is my set of DPM texture packs, which are available on our website. The link to that product is on the page below. So if you want some textures to work with, check that out. I'm just going to pick one at random and add it to the list. Now you can see that it shows up here under my images. These are all things that I've added to my layers sort of catalog list. I'm going to apply this blue one here, which I added a few minutes ago. The first thing you'll notice is that the layers kind of see through. So it comes in at 50% opacity, which means it's semi-transparent. The way that layers work is imagine that there's the images or pictures right on top of each other. So the boat is on the bottom and the blue texture is on top. If I change the opacity of the texture to 100%, now you can't see the boat at all. So the top layer is fully opaque. As I dial down the opacity, you'll start to see through it because it's now semi-transparent and start to see the boat image. If we go all the way, eventually the texture completely disappears. So opacity is one of the things you can use to blend in your texture or any kind of layer that you're adding. The next thing is the blend mode. That's this little pull down list here. What the blend mode does is it tells Luminar Neo how you want the top layer to interact with the one below it. If you choose anything in this area, darken, multiply, or color burn, it's going to look for anything in the top layer that's darker, like so. In this section with lighten and screen, it's going to look for anything on the texture layer that's lighter than what's right below it on the boat layer. I find that screen is a really good one to choose when you're doing textures. It's kind of my go-to, that one or one in the next set, overlay or soft light. It's also a good idea to dial the opacity up higher just so you can see the effect fully and then you can adjust it lower as needed. Let's try overlay. Notice the effect is really strong, but I can always dial it down with the opacity later. Let's try soft light. As the name indicates, it's similar to overlay in that it's adding contrast or looking for contrast. Everything in this section is, but it just applies it a little bit softer than overlay. 
as hard light implies, it's going to be more intense. And indeed, it is. Sometimes this one actually works if you leave the opacity really low. So I think I'm gonna go with soft light here and start with that. The next choice you have to make with your layer is how you want to orient it. You'll notice that there's a box around the outside, so you can actually rotate your new layer. In this case, we obviously don't want to do that because we want it to match the original image. You can also stretch it, right, or size it using the edges. Using these two buttons here, you can flip it left to right or bottom to top. When you're applying a texture, I usually just kind of play around with the flipping a little bit until I see one that I like. I kind of like that because it's dark up in this top corner and it looks like it's sort of dripping down. So I'm gonna go with this one. So now I've chosen the orientation, the position, the blend mode, and the opacity. The next step working with layers is to decide if you want the entire layer visible or if you want to mask a portion of it out so you only see part of that layer. If you've been using Luminar Neo for a while, you'll know that the new Mask AI works pretty good most of the time. Sometimes though, it gets it wrong. And one thing you have to keep in mind here, especially using a texture overlay, is that the AI is trying to analyze the texture image, so it doesn't take into account the one on the bottom. You'll notice if I press water, it's not getting the water. But if I press natural ground, it thinks the whole image is natural ground. So it's being fooled by the fact that this image is a texture. So I'm just going to do the mask manually. So I'm gonna fill it all in so the texture applies everywhere. And then I'm just going to use the brush to erase it a little bit from the boat. I think I'll do another pass across the city with a big brush and just a lowered opacity so the city has less texture as well. Something like that. Once you're happy with the settings here under layer properties, just hit return or enter to apply. The next thing we can do here is edit the layer. So if I don't want so much blue here, for example, I could come down to the color tool and maybe just dial down some of this saturation in the blues and the greens and bring it to a little bit more of the original color. Likewise, you can mask any of the tools that you add. Again, this is only applying to the top layer. So if I turn the saturation all the way down, you'll notice that it's only applying to the top layer, the texture, and not to the bottom layer, the boat. I'm gonna leave a little bit of color. I'm just gonna do a couple of more things to enhance the structure here. So the structure tool is great. You can actually enhance a texture or blur it out to make it a little bit more abstract. I kind of like that. And you can also increase the contrast. So you can go in and do a curve and add more contrast to your texture like so. So now it's starting to look really painterly, which is kind of what I was going for. But the main point to note here is that these edits have only been applied to the texture layer, the top layer. The bottom or the boat layer has different edits. Notice here on the texture, there's color, structure, and develop. And on the boat, there's develop, vignette, sky replacement, develop, enhance, and structure. So you're editing each layer independently. Another thing you couldn't do with Luminar AI, you could do with Luminar 4, is add a second texture or another new layer. This time I'm going to add one that I actually downloaded from the internet. This is what's called a grunge frame or an edge. To get things like this, what you wanna do is Google free Photoshop grunge frames or free Photoshop frames or edges and you'll get things like this. This one looks like an old Polaroid kind of film. So I'm going to turn the opacity to 100 and in this case I want to show you how quick and easy it is to apply a frame like this 
just by changing the blend mode to, take a guess before I press it, what do you think I'm gonna change it to to get the outside to show and not the inside of this image? Did you get it? It's darken. So this part of the image that's darker, the holes and the edges shows and the boat shows everywhere else. Of course, I can still decide if I want to flip it, any orientation, and so on. One thing that I do want to mention is currently, if you mask your layer, okay, so not the tools on the layer, but the actual layer, I'm going to show you an example. Um, I'm just going to use a radial gradient, and I'm going to mask out a part, a portion here, okay? So I'm doing that on purpose so that the texture or the overlay doesn't show in that spot. Okay. So now you can see that it's masking out this portion. But watch what happens if I flip the texture image or the layer. Okay. See the mask went with it. So the problem with that is if I had masked the boat and then flip it, the mask is in the wrong place. So one thing I will recommend is position your image or your layer before doing any masking to avoid this problem. Hopefully this is something that Skylum will address with a future update to Luminar Neo, but for now just make note of this workflow. So this is pretty cool, right? Being able to add this edge. Of course you can size it to fit and so on. But there's another little trick that you can do with it. What if I want white edges instead of black? I'm just gonna change the blend mode to normal and I'm gonna show you a little trick that's really cool. Go to the develop tool and open the curves portion. If you haven't used curve much before, I have another video on curves and how to use them. Check out the link in the description area below. On your curve, which is currently a straight line, the bottom left corner is black and the upper right corner is white. So we're actually going to switch them around. I'm going to make black white, so I'm gonna increase it. Now everything is white, and I'm gonna make white black. So basically the line is just going the other way. So instead of going this way, it's now going this way. And you can see what's happened. Now when we go back up to layer properties, what blend mode am I going to use now to get the white edge to show? Take a guess, ready, lighten, right? So now the edge is lighter than the rest of the picture below, so we use the lighten blend mode and the white shows through. I seem to be on a boat kick today. <laughs> Here's another image of a different boat that I've done some editing on. Now I've done a sky replacement and Luminar Neo does a really great job of adding the reflection when you do a sky replacement. This is one of the skies from my sky pack, which is also available on my website. Check out our store using the link below. Okay, so what did I do with layers here? I've added two layers. I got this image of a hot air balloon on a stock website. So I made sure that the balloon has the correct lighting, that it's coming from the right side. And when I added the balloon, I made sure that this layer, which is the balloon, I sized it to fit the sky, so you can see how you can size these things, right? Make the balloon smaller. And then I did a few edits to tone it down because it was too bright when I initially added it and I lowered the contrast and made it a little bit more blurry as if it was in the background out of focus. Previously, if you were using Luminar AI, you could add this balloon as a sky augmented element. However, the problem is there's no balloon in the reflection. Well, problem solved. Now you can just add another layer, which I did here. And this one, I just flipped it upside down. So I made the balloon the same size, roughly, as this one. Let me just turn the opacity up. So I made it the same size, flipped it upside down, and then put it in the water. Then I just lowered the opacity and changed the blend mode to soft light so it would look more like a real reflection, not as bright or as intense. If you are brand new to using Luminar Neo and you want to learn more about layers and all of the other tools, I have three full lessons just on layers in my Luminar Neo complete course. 
You also get these images, as well as several others, my raw files to work with and follow along on the lessons. So if you're interested in taking your photo editing and your Luminar Neo skills to the next level, check it out. There's a link to the course in the description below. I have one last example for you, and I want you to make a guess. What do you think I've done here using layers? Do you see a texture overlay? How about a grunge edge? There's certainly not any hot air balloons in this one. So what is it that I've added as a new layer? If you think you know, put your guess in the comment area below. Just pause the video and then restart it after you've entered your guess. Are you ready? Here's the before image. Did you guess it? Did you get it right? I added a bokeh overlay. That might have been a trick question. Maybe you've never seen this kind of overlay used before. But it does a really nice job on images like this. When we look at the editing panel, you could see that there is the overlay. I could just hide it. So this is one from my set of bokeh overlays. It's part of the ultimate editing bundle along with textures and skies. So if you want to take advantage of all of these tips, check out the ultimate editing bundle. This was added the same way that I added the texture and I did a few edits to adjust it. The original image was really pink. I shifted the color to match more with the background and punched up the bokeh a little bit brighter. That should give you some idea of all the things you could do with layers, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Remember, if you want to learn more, check out my full Luminar Neo course. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to watch another Luminar Neo tutorial, click here now to learn all about the histogram. Please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Take care, until next time.